Hello everyone, today we'll be looking at the My Pediatrics History Taking Template. So in history taking, the format goes like this. First, uh, identification of the patient and also in pediatrics, you need to identify who is the adult who is giving the history, who, who is uh, accompanying the patient. Uh, next is presenting complaint, history of presenting complaint, uh, systemic review, then past medical history, which includes antenatal history, birth history, postnatal history, hospital admission, uh, feeding and vaccination. Uh, next is developmental history, and then MFS stands for medication history, including allergies, family history, and also social history. ICE stands for ideas, concerns, and expectations. So for identification, uh, you need to identify who is the adult accompanying the patient, the name of the patient, age, date of birth, because you need to be quite specific about the age of the child. Sometimes the child is, uh, let's say, um, three months and uh, three years and uh, three months, and then the parents might say three years old. But if you know the date of birth, you can calculate the exact age yourself, the gender, and also the race. Then for presenting complaint, you need to know each symptom. You need to ask. Uh, you need to write down each symptom and duration. For example, fever day seven, runny nose for uh, ten days, diarrhea for ten days, like that. Next is history of presenting complaint. You need to get a story uh, of what happened. Uh, for example, how it. Uh, how the mother bring the child to the clinic and then after that what was done at the clinic and then uh, did it help and then after that what made them end up in the hospital like the progression of the presenting complaint in chronological order so one of the good one of there's a good way to um, kind of elicit the story uh, which is to ask um, onset and progression and then what was done and how is the child now next uh, you need to also explore features of each symptom uh, for example for diarrhea you need to know the frequency the color the presence of blood and mucus in the diarrhea and also make sure to ask questions to rule out dangerous condition for example in a case of uh, febrile seizure uh, you need to ask questions that might suggest meningitis. And then uh, contact history because most of the cases you see in pediatrics are actually infectious cases. Uh, so most of the time you'll be able to uh, elicit a contact history. For example, the cousin that uh, she played with uh, was also sick at that time or the mother was sick or the father was sick. So contact history is very important. Next is systemic review. I like to draw a stick figure so that I can uh, see uh, what to ask from head to toe. Uh, you can do it any way you like. So for general systemic review, I will ask uh, fever, increase crying because the child cannot tell you when they are in pain. Uh, if they are too young, they can, cannot talk and they can't tell you that they are in pain. So how they show you is by crying. Uh, but of course it's normal for children to cry there's increased crying and they are irritable uh, when they feel unwell also when they feel unwell there will be reduced activity and also the parents might be able to see a rash so these are my general uh, systemic review fever, increased crying, reduced activity and rash next I ask uh, just screen head to toe, uh, then is the, is the child have any headache, runny nose, cough, noisy breathing inside the chest area, uh, at the face area, or chest area, then um, abdominal pain, diarrhea, vomiting is all the gastrointestinal or GI problems, and then also urine output, any decrease in urine output they can uh, assess for hydration, or bowel output, uh, any blood or mucus in the bowels any changes right next we move on to past medical history 
so I actually uh, what we are taught is uh, all of these are separate not under past medical history but I like to categorize them under past medical history and remember the sequence chronologically so uh, this is how I remember uh, for past medical history you're gonna uh, imagine the child is in the mother's tummy so antenatal and then the baby comes out that's birth and then after the baby comes out that's postnatal and then after that were there any other hospital admissions and then as the baby grows you need to feed the baby and also vaccinate the baby so antenatal birth postnatal past hospital admissions feeding history and vaccination history so let's go through this one by one antenatal history uh, you're gonna ask the mother if uh, she had any obstetric problems uh, before the baby was born when she was pregnant were there any problems uh, so specific questions will be were the antenatal scans normal uh, were the screening bloods normal uh, your hemoglobin was it normal your glucose levels was it normal and then um, were there any complications during delivery for example uh, excessive blood loss uh, the maybe uh, delayed uh, prolonged labor things like that uh, need, the need uh, of instruments for example forceps or vacuum delivery and then uh, the birth of the baby you need to know the birth weight of the baby and also the gestation of the baby uh, in weeks so uh, the normally is around 40 weeks uh, you need to know the gestation because you know uh, if you need to know if the baby is preterm so that you can adjust for developmental history so less than 32 weeks is preterm uh, then postnatal history uh, asked uh, after that were there any NICU admissions NICU stands for neonatal intensive care unit and then past hospital admissions so any hospital admissions after that and then uh, feeding history uh, you need to ask if uh, she the baby is breastfed or formula fed or mixed uh, and then have they started weaning weaning means uh, started giving uh, solid food or adult food um, usually we uh, we will advise to um, do exclusive breastfeeding for six months which means uh, only breast milk no water no uh, formula feed for six months and then after that you start weaning um, and then uh, vaccination history so it's useful to know your local vaccination schedule so that you know what what vaccinations need to be done by what age next we move on to development uh, i won't explain very detail on development i think i'll make another video on how to take a developmental history uh, so in brief, uh, it's uh, you need to assess GFSS, gross motor, fine motor and vision, speech and hearing, and social development. These are the four categories to assess development. Um, development history is especially important in um, in some patients such as uh, babies born with uh, cerebral palsy um, so these are quite important things to assess and others will be MFS medication history including allergies family history uh, any of the um, family members have uh, similar conditions so it might be genetically related or even uh, infectious and then social history um, you need to ask uh, if the child is going to school how are they going how, how are they doing in school 
and also uh, draw out a family tree of who is taking care of the baby, uh, who is in the house with the baby. So you can gauge uh, how is the care. Sometimes they might be uh, with a baby sitter. Um, and then eyes, ideal concerns and expectations. Right. I think that's all I have for you. Thank you.